Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. Uh, I wanted to do a quick series of short videos concerning Bill C-42, also known as the Common Sense Firearms Act. And the reason why I want to do these videos is there's a lot of people out there that seem to have bought into a lot of the misinformation. And I would say it's actually crossed a line, hence it's made me make videos about it. It's crossed a line to disinformation and even further over to flat out lying. And that bothers me, right? Because I'm desperately trying to believe in our system and you know, that runs contrary to everything that I believe personally. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are making comments about the effects of Bill C-42 and they have, no, they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, the first video that I want to do is this one, which is concerning the changes to the authorization of transport. So as you may or may not know, I'm an instructor with the RCMP Canadian Firearms Program. I've been an instructor for about five years, and now I've run about a thousand people through that program quite successfully. I've also been a gun owner for 10 years. So I know these regulations like the back of my hand. I teach them every second weekend. So uh, rest assured, I can communicate to you what the practical application of these changes is going to be. So the very first thing was the ATT. Well, that was a real issue. Now, part of the problem for me was you had this meme going around that prohibited weapons uh, would be in trunks of cars, machine guns basically, in the trunks of cars at the Canadian Tire, sitting in cars at the hockey rink, um, you know, at the grocery store, the shopping center, and then these cars are going to get broken into, and then there's going to be a rain of bullets everywhere. I, I can't tell you how disingenuous this line um, is. Uh, let me show you a couple of video clips about it. The other major change in Bill C-42 is removing the requirement which exists in most provinces to have a permit in any vehicle transporting restricted firearms and the bill goes further, it prohibits any province from reintro reintroducing such a requirement. Currently, permits must specify a reason for transporting the firearm and specify that the travel must be from a specific point A to a specific point B. This makes it easy for the police to enforce the prohibition on the illegal transportation of firearms by providing a specific permit and a specific route. C-42 rolls transportation permits into the license to own firearms. This will automatically allow the transportation of firearms between the owner's home and a list of five kinds of places to any gun range, to any gun shop, to any gun show, to any police station, and to any border post for exiting from Canada. Uh, I'm looking forward to having the opportunity in committee of having law enforcement representatives present so that we can talk to them about the impact of this change of no longer requiring specific permits from a specific place to a specific place for restricted firearms. I think there's a great deal of danger here for Canadians. Okay, I'm gonna exp explain this as fast as I can for the lay person. Uh, in Canada, you need a firearms license. In Canada, if you wanna buy restricted or prohibited firearms, most of us don't have prohibited licenses. You can't get them unless you have a very special purpose to have them. But restricted firearms are typically pistols uh, and any rifle that the government doesn't like or the RCMP doesn't like, that's it. Uh, other than that, there's plenty of other rifles and shotguns that are non-restricted. But nonetheless, if I want to transport my restricted or my crazy black rifle um, to and from a shooting range, I have to have a firearms license, I have to have it on me, I have to have a registration certificate for the firearm showing whose gun it is, and I also have to have an authorization of transport telling the police if I get pulled over that I'm allowed to be driving around with this gun. If you've got a license, you're probably pretty reliable enough to go to the range and shoot your gun. If you did something illegal outside your home with the gun, it wouldn't matter whether you had an ATT or not. They'd take your license, therefore you cannot have firearms. So the whole notion of the ATT is ridiculous on its face. And if you looked into it, I'm sure you'd come to the same conclusion. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to tell. But nonetheless, you've seen the meme that's going around about how all of a sudden things are going to change. Bill C-42 is going to, going to come into effect and things are going to change. People are going to be running around with machine guns. It's simply not true. So in the legislation, the change is, is that the ATT, instead of being a separate form that you fill out and send, it gets approved and they mail it back to you. Um, instead of that separate form, you're, it's going to be combined with the license. So if you have a firearms license, you'll have an ATT. The, the ATT as an entity still will exist, but it'll exist in cyberspace, just like an electronic copy of your license is there inside the computer when someone calls the firearm center. So it still exists, nothing's changed. 
and the, the, the uh, actual stipulations of the ATT are still the same. Now, in the bill, let's see what it says. So in the bill, apparently, and this is the short strokes of it, it's, there's an amendment to Section 61 of the Firearms Act that allow people to take their firearms to and from an approved shooting range under Section 29, so you can go shoot your gun without having to check with them every single time. It's ridiculous if they trust you with it. There's no reason why you need permission to go to the range. If you were going to do something illegal, you wouldn't call for permission anyway. But whatever, it's, it's feel-good stuff, right? You can also take it to and from any place a peace officer, firearms officer, chief firearms officer is located for verifications, uh, verification, registration, or disposal. Or you can take it to a gunsmith, basically, or a gun show or a border crossing. Oh my God, there's going to be guns everywhere. Well, you know what? Here in my hand, I have my authorization to transport that I've had for 10 years. It's been renewed, obviously. But this is the same authorization to transport I've had for 10 years. Let's read where my ATT allows me to take this. This is today, before the act has passed. Well, I can take it to and from any shooting range that has been approved under Section 29. No change there. I can take my firearm to and from a licensed gunsmith. No changes there. I can take it to and from a border crossing. No changes there, and I can take it to and from a peace officer to have it disposed of. No changes there. The impact of this change of no longer requiring specific permits from a specific place to a specific place for restricted firearms. I think there's a great deal of danger here for Canadians. I think there's a great deal of danger here for Canadians. The only difference is gun show, but I can get a short-term ATT to take my gun to a gun show anyway. It's just an extra phone call, an extra form, and an extra approval, and an extra mailing. Okay, so you see, there, there is, there's no changes whatsoever. Now, the other thing, so it's been implied that the ATT is just going to evaporate, that all of a sudden the rules to transport are going to change. They're not. Now, to address, and I'm going to wrap this up, but to address directly this thing about, oh, you know, there's going to be guns in trunks of cars at the, at, the, at the hockey rink or at the shopping center, and these cars are going to get broken into, and there's going to be guns all over. There's going to be just bullets raining everywhere. Everybody's going to get shot. Which means that it would be very possible uh, for, uh, in any given supermarket parking lot, uh, for uh, firearms to be in the trunks of a car and therefore uh, easily accessed by criminals uh, willing to break in. Criminals don't abide by the law. And criminals will break into those vehicles. They will take those weapons and they'll use them for wrong purposes. Of course, this whole line is ridiculous. It's not reasonable. In the ATT, it says that I can take any reasonably direct route to and from any of these places anytime, 24-7, 365. So the idea is, is that if I have my restricted firearm in my car, can I stop for gas if I'm running out of gas? Of course I can stop for gas. Of course I'm going to park that car and I can leave it unattended as long as the firearms are being transported as per regulation and the doors are locked. So I can go in, I can get something to eat. I can stop at Tim Hortons and have lunch with my buddies before we go to the range. Absolutely, you can do that today. I can stop at the, at the Canadian Tire and get some ammunition as long as I'm not too far out of the way. If I'm pulling off into the parking lot, grab ammunition. That occurs every day. And think about non-restricted firearms too. People can carry non-restricted firearms in their vehicles anytime for any reason, as long as it's a lawful purpose. So this stuff happens all the time regardless. Areas that under this bill you can transport weapons now it gets confusing uh, how can you how can the police be sure that he's going between point A and point B how can we be sure uh, that with that uh, gun and yes locked and no ammunition in the trunk uh, isn't stopped at a grocery store or a Canadian tire or the or the or a service station getting gas uh, I mean, that's the risk, and the Minister of Public Safety is willing to accept that risk. That's wrong in the interest of... You know, so, anyway, hopefully you guys get the message about the ATT. Nothing has changed whatsoever. All it is is that, for all intents and purposes, I only just not have to take this one extra piece of paper to the range. That's all the whole, that's the change for me. That's it. Other than that, it, it is a shall issue. If I have a license, I have an ATT. Big deal. If I'm unreliable, and I can't, I can't be left alone with a firearm. I wouldn't have a license anyway, right? Anyway, hopefully this helps. Uh, please feel free to comment. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can, at CivilAdvantage1, or you can find us on the net at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.